This video is sponsored by NVIDIA. This is faster than a 22,000 Mac Pro using Final Cut Pro 10. So if you've been looking to get a laptop for a creative or a content creation or even gaming, now is probably the perfect time to buy one. So I got early access to the Gigabyte Aero 15 inch OLED XC model, a laptop designed for creative professionals who also enjoy gaming. I do wanna disclose that Gigabyte did send this out for me to test out and see what my thoughts were. I don't get to keep this laptop, unfortunately. They also don't have any input on this video all opinions are my own. Now for this video, I primarily wanna focus on editing performance. This is what I'm most interested in and probably those watching the channel too. I'll leave the gaming and other benchmarks to channels like Linus Tech Tips who specialize in that. This model, the one that Gigabyte sent over for me to test out, starts at $2,199. And it comes with an Intel Core i7, 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of PCIe storage, and the latest NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 GPU. They also offer an upgraded model. That one will set you back roughly about $3,500. That one comes with a Core i9 processor, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 GPU. Now both models come with this beautiful 15.6 inch Samsung UHD OLED display that is actually factory calibrated right out of the box. So it's going to give you accurate colors and this is great for color grading. This also has a plethora of IO ports including a class two SD card reader, which I think is fantastic. So the first thing I wanted to do is see how it would perform in Adobe Premiere, which is my editing software of choice. So I loaded up a completed project which had mixture of Sony A7S III footage, Canon EOS R5, and also Canon C500 Mark II. And playback was incredibly smooth. I could scrub through the timeline and make changes really quick, and never once did it lag. The experience was buttery smooth. I loaded the drop frame indicator to see if there was any frame rate loss, and the whole entire time, it was green with zero drop frames and this was at full playback. And just to give you guys some context, this exact same project on a fully loaded MacBook Pro using Adobe Premiere Pro Beta, which is actually now optimized for the MacBook Pro with the M1 processor, could not play this back without dropping frames or lagging. I continued to open up more projects to see if I can get it to buckle, and I was speechless at how well everything played without breaking a sweat. I mean, we're talking about Adobe Premiere Pro, which isn't necessarily the fastest editor by any stretch, but it was handling everything I threw at it, including 8K raw footage at full playback. I mean, I've never seen Adobe Premiere Pro run so fast and smooth that I was blown away. Now, I recently did a video where I put the latest Apple MacBook Pro with the M1 processor against several computers, including a 22,000 Apple Mac Pro. If you guys have not seen that video, I highly recommend you watch it. In a nutshell, the Apple MacBook Pro with the M1 processor showed great performance when using it for video editing. And we have those benchmark results. So I thought it would be fun to put it up against this computer, but also retest the Apple MacBook Pro with the M1 processor to see if it has improved in the last two months. And let me tell you, the results are so unbelievable that I had to retest it again just to make sure that I wasn't doing something wrong. So test number one, which is an 11 minute, 39 second project in Adobe Premiere, in my previous test, these were the results on the computers I tested, which was a Mac Pro, MacBook Pro with the M1, a well-spec Dell XPS laptop, and a four-year-old custom-built PC made by Puget. The problem with that test is at the time of filming, Adobe didn't have an optimized version of Premiere Pro that would take advantage of the M1 chipset. So we reran the test on the MacBook Pro M1, and it finished in 24 minutes, 22 seconds, still much slower than the other computers that we had previously tested. Now, when we ran the exact same test on the Gigabyte Aero. It finished in an impressive six minutes and 38 seconds. 
Holy crap! To give you guys some context, this exact same project imported into Final Cut Pro 10. The MacBook Pro with the M1 processor will finish it in five minutes and 45 seconds. And the 22,000 Mac Pro is crushing it at four minutes and 32 seconds. The problem is that Final Cut Pro 10 isn't available for PCs. So it really isn't an apples to apples comparison, no pun intended. But what if we take something like DaVinci Resolve, which is heavily optimized for Apple's MacBook Pro with the M1 processor. So in order to keep this fair, we reran this exact same test since we did it two months ago to see if it has improved, and it has. The MacBook Pro finished in six minutes, six seconds, which shows a huge improvement compared to when we first ran this test back in December, and it did it in 11 minutes and 39 seconds. It literally cut that time in half, which shows how well DaVinci Resolve has been optimizing their software. It's only been two months, and it's already over 100% better, which is awesome. However, when we ran that test on this computer, it decimated that export and it did it in four minutes and 31 seconds. Yes, that is not a mistake. The Gigabyte Arrow rendered this project in four minutes, 31 seconds. This is faster than a 22,000 Mac Pro using Final Cut Pro 10. You heard this right. This computer in DaVinci Resolve is faster than a Mac using Final Cut Pro 10 on just about every level. Now, just like in Premiere Pro, playback performance is smooth as butter. You can edit without any issues and scrubbing and moving through the timeline is excellent. And this was pretty much the trend that we saw when we tested different codecs, resolutions, and even other projects. The Gigabyte Arrow pretty much destroyed Apple's MacBook Pro M1 in just about every level. In fact, I would say this computer is more on par with a Mac Pro and other desktop PCs that we tested. I've never seen a laptop perform this well to the point where I'd be okay using this as my only computer. I mean, it's got a full size HDMI, USB type C. I can use an external monitor and output 8K at 120 Hertz. What's crazy to me is that this is the same price as a fully loaded 13 inch MacBook Pro, but yet you're getting a wider, larger 15 inch display, better IO, faster performance, performance, you can also game on this machine, and personally, I think it even looks better. So as I said at the beginning of the video, if you're looking to get a laptop with desktop level performance, especially if you're gonna be doing video editing, I would not hesitate to pick this up. In fact, I also mentioned that I have to return this to Gigabyte. I'm actually going to buy one myself. This is how much I like this laptop. Thinking about getting the Core i9 with a 3080 GPU, if you guys wanna see a video on that, I'm personally curious to see even how much faster it is in comparison to this one. Leave a like and leave me a comment down below. My name is Armando. Thanks again for watching and you will catch me in the next one. Adios.